Sure. Did you get a chance to watch both games last night to kind of figure out who you guys would end up playing Saturday? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did. I managed to see quite a bit of both. Um, I started watching the Carolina game for obvious reasons, top seed um, and at home. But um, quickly realised that that was going to be a very tight game. And, and of course, it, it went against them. So managed to see a reasonable amount of, of the other game. Uh, listen, they're understandably so. They're both... You know, competing, both teams competing, and both games for um, the right to come into the to the playoff as a whole, and uh, they're both really competitive games. What did you see from the Ottawa and the Charleston game? What did anything come to mind in terms of something new or something different that you didn't see not, throughout the regular season? Well, not really, no. Um, there's been very little to choose between a lot of teams. Especially the sides that are in the top ten, they you know on any given day. I think any team can take uh, any particular game. Um, as far as now looking at Charleston, who were able to overcome Ottawa, uh, I, I think you're seeing all of the characteristics that you've seen in the past from Charleston teams. Um, Mike does a wonderful job and has done. I think he's made every postseason that I read somewhere. It's a great stat. You know, he's, it's not as if you know they're a, they're a side that maintain continuity every year. There's a lot of turnover of players. His recruitment's excellent, um, and and they themselves emulate. I think the coach is very well organised. They're very disciplined. Um, they're not just competitive. They have a nice dimension to them. Uh, in in Lewis, Higashi. Um, you look at guys like Daly coming into the group and not played loads, but. We, we fell foul of some of his his uh, exploits in the Open Cup, a lot of pace. You know, they've got some really nice dimensions, and what we know is we've had some very, very tough games against them, and I expect it will be exactly the same at the weekend. Does it give you a little bit of, maybe hearten you a little bit to know that they are coming off 120 minutes out of the country and have to travel and all those sorts of things? Uh, yeah, uh, look, uh, would I like to be where we are? Yeah, of course. Um, it gives us a little bit more time to prepare. Yes, they'll have more travel, and I'm sure there'll be some sort of fatigue set in. But I think when when the guys or those guys finally get to the weekend, they put all of that out of their mind. He has the ability to rotate a few players. They've got they've got a, a competitive group, and I think whoever comes in and plays in whatever style he chooses to play, they'll they'll go about their business. They always do. They're, they're not they're not an easy touch for anyone. Um, you know what we have to try and inject into the game is the type of attitude and competition, cup competition mentality that we have over the last two or three games. If we can start off brightly and get ourselves into a nice rhythm and groove, then you know we've proved that we're as, as tough as any team as well. This will be the fourth time you've played Charleston this season and obviously you played Cincinnati four times last season. Do you feel like that amount of matches against your playoff opponent helps or hurts your preparation? It's the same for both teams, you know. They'll they'll have a good insight into how we play. They'll know some of our players. You know, Forrest has played for Charleston, so there'll, there'll, there'll be no there'll be no secrets between the two teams. It, it really is about in the postseason, and it, and it is cup competition. You know, there's there's no way of recovering in the the course of 34 games. You're in or you're out. It's the guys that apply themselves properly, they've kept some sort of professionalism about their play, they've got to play in control because otherwise you run the risk that there are other extenuating circumstances that can affect the game and to show the sort of form which is why you know we wanted to finish the season well, every team does but we have, we're in a good place, players are confident, they've got momentum and those those little nuances and those details can be the difference in big games like this between winning and losing. As you'd expect, you know, at the end of every week, you know, not just the playoffs, but the regular season too, there's a lot more competition as you go to the end of the week. Uh, what's the breakdown now that you do have your opponent, you know, as Charleston? What's the breakdown of this training session and possibly even tomorrow as well? Well, today's always a big day. Um, looking at 11 v 11 play, uh, trying to just pick out some of the characteristics of their team. Uh, a, 
that we might be able to take a little bit more advantage of, um, B, that we need to be mindful of and careful of. When all said and done, they're a difficult side to break down when they choose to be stout and resilient, as I've seen them. And they've also got, as I've said, some nice dimensions. They've got pace, they've got invention, and they're also a very good threat from dead balls as well. So today's really about getting our game plan right and uh, making sure that the players are fully appreciative of how they need to start the game, what, what little things we're after in those opening exchanges, um, how, we, how we tend to manage the game or intend to, and of course, what, what difficulties we could run into and to be ready for. It looks like it's going to be 55 and rainy when you play. Does knowing that it's going to be a wet surface, does that change anything in terms of preparation or not really? I think the players will be happy about that. You know, we're, we're at that time of year anyway where the climate's changed quite dramatically. The temperature's dropped. It makes the game quicker. It'll make it more competitive for sure. It'll probably lend itself to being even more so in a professional mindset and not getting too overzealous with challenges or the way that you you try and impose yourself but when all said and done there'll be 11 players on the field the 10 outfield on each side will understand the nature of of what we're in there'll be I'm sure some very strong challenges and there'll also be some very good football both sides are really capable you've had a strong run of home form to close out the year how important is it to kind of get that sort of support especially in, in cup competition where it's single elimination game here at First Tennessee Park I, I do think that the running has, has been very helpful for us. I know we played at Nissan Stadium against Carolina, but I think it helps the continuity of the week. It's not just the match day. You get into a rhythm of how you're working, times, what, what, you, what you're trying to get out of each session, whereas when you're travelling, it can just put you out your stride a little bit. Um, you know, the guys have been used to staying in their own bed and, and preparing in their own way at home and then being here at a particular time. Uh, the, the fact that we get the chance to play in front of our own fans and, of course, everyone's hoping that first playoff game in club history at home brings supporters out in their droves because when this place has got uh, a, a good crowd in it and some noise, it's as good as any. You know, there's a lovely atmosphere. It will drive the players on. It inspires what will already be a, a particularly competitive game. But I just think it will give it that extra cup edge. This club is going to be vastly different in about a year's time, obviously, with Major League Soccer before coming into the place. Or before that, certainly yeah, it'll not. it probably be in about but, um, three or four months. <laughs> perhaps. Um, do you see anything different in terms of the, the mental um, the attitude and the way that your players are coming to training? and how they're preparing for this game, knowing that this is, from now on out, here on out, this is, you know, win or go home. We've, we've contended with the MLS, um, if you like, shadow behind us all year. So the players knew from the very outset that they were going to be in the best possible position to show what they're about and be in front of the coaching staff you know, myself, mm -hmm. who's going to be moving forward with the MLS group. We've had periods in the season where particular players have been disappointed and frustrated when they feel as though they're on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. We've had periods of the season where those same players are now back in the frame and they realised that there were, there were two jobs going on this year. The first one was to be as competitive as we can, as a function inside. Mm -hmm. But secondly... To make sure, not that everyone got the best possible opportunity, but that the competition was good enough to be able to rotate the team and certainly to give them a fair crack at a whip. So there's been loads of emotions. I think we've come through all of those. And we're at a point in the season, and I think you saw that maybe four or five games ago, where everyone went from, OK, maybe, I'm not sure, Maybe I am sure in my mind where I sit in the grand scheme of things. But I'm now going to roll my sleeves up and we're going to get on with the business in hand, which is to finish the season off well and to achieve what we can. And maybe something 
maybe something that some players will never have the chance to do again, which is to win a championship. I, I don't know where people will go or what they will do. What I do know is that this group throughout has conducted themselves fantastically. As far as I'm concerned, day to day, they've been extremely professional. They've worked hard. They've never, ever shown on the field that there's any issues, even if they did have some off the field. We've contended with injuries and to some very influential players. And we've always been able to go about our business in a, a very competitive fashion. And we're at a point where all of these guys now see in the team or out of it that I'm part of something quite special. And when I look back on this, whether I'm here or whether I'm somewhere else, that is going to be something I remember with fond memories. Do you feel like those past four or five games that you mentioned has been um, that, that the, I guess the increased success of the team is kind of from a little bit less of having the, some of the guys splitting their focus, worrying about MLS versus just saying, let's get out and get the job done? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, I, I would, if you ask those players, I bet they've all gone through a particular period where they felt as though they were out of my plans and therefore out of the future plans. And that, that was the connection. They always looked and felt as though if they weren't in the team, because I was moving forward, I was, they were out of the plans completely, which wasn't ever the case. You know, I, I've had two jobs to try and do. I think we've done a very good job to date as a functioning team, as I've said. And as we move forward, we'll, we'll certainly find out what players make that jump and, and who can be part of the next part of our history and who won't be. But that won't be for a little while yet, hopefully. And when it does come around, I don't think any of them can look back and say either they, they weren't able to show what they were about or they, or they weren't functioning as a group in the right way because that's as big as anything if, if you're not working as a group how does any one individual show what they're about so there was quite a lot to contend with early on and, it, and it's not a shock that you know for some guys it was quite difficult to to maybe wrap their heads around i know it was for me early on running two teams or or, or trying to uh, you know build the foundations of one and work day on day with the other do you think that, you know, based off of what you described in terms of how the players have approached the season, do you think that the energy or the urgency that they have as players has remained high but been even, or do you think that it's increased because of the playoffs? Oh, I, I think we've certainly shifted into a new gear. Um, the last three games at home, we always highlighted as a, an opportunity, come what may, once we'd qualified for the playoffs, to say, look, the only way that we can prepare for this in our way is to try and create the environment and atmosphere that you're going to see come post-season. The fact that those games were in, in conjunction with chasing for the Eastern Conference regular season title mm -hmm. just added to that. It was, it was another dimension to the, to the running that I think gave the players a little bit more of a shot in the arm and you know, a bit more passion to their game but that's it's lent itself nicely to what we're now going to see. Good guys. Thank you. Does it feel like a whole new season now that it's basically just cup play rather than you know you can get the next game to make up for a mistake in the regular season? Yeah, I think um, I think luckily for us, I think we, we started to replicate the environment of playoffs. I think the last couple games of the season because we were competing for a title, obviously. Um, so I think you saw us kind of you know flip that mindset. You know, a couple of games ago, but yeah, I mean, they're always a, a different feel. Um, you know, they're yeah, it's one game, you know, and, and anything can happen, and so you've got to be good always and take advantage of the opportunities that you have. This situation is a bit unique, not like any other U.S. clubs in the playoffs. The fact that U.S. is going to be in the last next year is that added pressure for you for the rest of your teammates, knowing that this is also a winner go home as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, this is obviously the last opportunity for the fans to see a USL team here, uh, you know, for now. And, um, you know, I think we're focused on what we're trying to achieve. I think the pressure honestly comes from us being a two seed more so than being the MLS club. I mean, you know, we've done well all season. Um, we're going to be playing at home. Um, and, and we put that pressure on ourselves. So individually, there may be pressure in terms of funding where your team is going to Yeah, I mean, everybody wants to perform. And, and whether it's going to be, you know, here in the future, 
before at another club. I think, you know, these types of games and, and the big moments always define players and define careers for players. So, I mean, you know, that's where that added intensity comes in these games for sure. You're a playoff vet, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you've missed the playoffs yet in your yeah. USL career. Um, what do you guys have to do to make sure that you survive in advance and, um, you know, not, I guess, lose on, on the home field against a, a team that you've beaten in the regular season? Um, I think we just got to keep doing the same things that have made it successful. Um, you know, obviously Charleston pre presents its own challenges. Um, you know, we can't skip skip any parts of the process. You know, first 10, 15 minutes, there's a certain th job that needs to be done. Um, you know, the next period of the game, and you just kind of have to go through those steps, um, not allow any pressure to get to us, and, and really, you know, do what's been making us successful all year. I mean, we're on a good run of form. Not a ton has to change, but it is going to be a little bit different atmosphere for sure. You watched either of the games last night to get a feel for who you'd be playing? Yeah, both. I had them both on the screen. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can tell, I mean, watching those games and how tight they were and, and the way that both teams, you know, battled back to tie the game at some point. Um, I mean, that's just playoff soccer. Um, you know, nothing's going to come easy. Uh, and, and, you know, we're obviously going to respect Charleston as they come in. They're, they're here for a reason. So, yeah, we'll do, we'll do everything we need to do. We've played Charleston a couple of times this season already. I think three. Um, how do you how do you feel like they're gonna they're gonna play against you? And how do you feel like you guys potentially match up against them? Um, yeah, I mean, I think in the times that we've played them, especially here, uh, whether it was in the Open Cup or in regular season, I think they were very organized defensively, um, got into some blocks, and wanted to make things difficult on us. Um, I think we expect to see something similar. Um, you saw that really against them uh, or against Ottawa last night. I thought they were, you know, Ottawa controlled a lot of the game and, you know, you know created probably more opportunities. But Charleston made things difficult and the, the game dragged on and they were able to get the result. Coaches really announced you as one of the players that's really kept this team intact, you know, as this team has tried to get to that top seed. It didn't, but, you know, the win was still there and you guys still played pretty well. What's your approach? and how you've individually, individually made sure that you played your part, and how does that change? Will it change now that you're in the postseason? Yeah, I think um, really, I mean, we, we've got a great group all around. Um, you know, I think our midfield's really come together with uh, a string of games all together. Um, bolder has been great. lebo has been very good. I mean, we've got a, I mean, you go down the lineup, I mean, everybody's really stepped up when we need them to. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to play whatever role is necessar necessary for me in, in, in each game. I mean, sometimes it looks more like an eight where I'm getting into the box more. Sometimes, you know, I hold more, and it, it really just depends on the game. But, you know, everybody's really stepped up down the, down the line, and, and, you know, we've got a great group. I think we can achieve something special. Is it in y'all's minds at all that Charleston ended your run in the first cup competition of the year, and now you guys have a chance to do the same thing? Um, that, I mean, honestly, I think it was just so long ago now, and, um, you know, a lot of things have changed. I mean, we've got different personnel. They've they've got different personnel. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a completely different type of matchup, um, and it, it's going to be a battle. They're, like like I've said, they're they're going to make things difficult for us. Um, we're going to have to do things right, and uh, you know, hopefully at the end of the ninety minutes, we, we've got our job done. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of you know, questions about this team. As well. And I think we just got to take it as another game. Uh, what, whatever pressure there is there is the one we put on ourselves. I think we're in a good run. We've been playing well. And hopefully we just keep that running. You know? Four more games, hopefully. But there's been an added pressure, maybe from the outside, about uh, obviously making the soccer coming to this club. Uh, do you find that that's a little bit of pressure on yourself on visually to perform in the tall season? No. I think whenever you go out there, you, you, you just got to perform. Uh, individually, as a team, as a group. Uh, we've been doing this for a while now. I think the group has been together for um, four of us. Uh, for a while now, so I think whenever you step on this push, of course there's a the natural pressures that come up having to go over for the fans and all that, but I don't think there's anything out of going into a match. Mm -hmm. The last time you guys saw Charleston, you had a nice moment uh, at the end of the match. Um, what do you guys have to do to, to replicate the result and survive in advance in the postseason? Yeah, I think that was a game where we, uh, we we played really well, I thought. I thought we imposed ourselves from the start. Um, they, they scored a goal against a run of play. I think if we come out with that same mentality, that same attitude, you know, on our own field, we've been here for the last three weeks now. Uh, we've had some nice moments, so I think if we come out with the same mentality, um, that should be that, that, that should set a good uh, platform for us going forward. It hasn't been that long since you played them, but have you seen them kind of change a little bit at all as you prepare for this game? Um, no, not really. I think I think they're they're a club that's been around for a while. I mean, since my rookie year, they've played pretty much the same. Uh, they've had a decent amount of the same core, so I think they'll come out, they'll fight, they'll battle, they'll work. 
um, that they're a blue collar team and we just got to be ready for it. Gary talked about you and, and Matt as being two of the better players on the field against Atlanta and talked about your ability to press and then play the ball out of tight spaces. How do you feel like that will, will help you guys against um, against Charleston and how do you feel like that kind of whole the spine of the team is coming together with you and the center backs and Daniel Rios up top? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're, we're I kind of look at like the back, the back six, the back four, not me and Matt in front of them. I think we're a group that have to do a lot of dirty work for the rest of the guys. I think we have fantastic ability going forward with the wingers and Rapapa and Allen and, and Daniel and Lebo. Like, those guys give us so much going forward that we're the stability in the core of the team to hold us back. If we have one part going forward and we don't get the other part going on the other side, then it could be it could be an ugly game. <laughs> you mentioned that their opening goal against you guys here came against the run of play. I don't know if it's, it's fair necessarily to say, but it seems like a lot of the goals that have been scored against you this year have been against the run of play. Obviously, that says that your defense is, is pretty dominant otherwise, but how do you prevent that from happening again in, in this Charleston game? I just think we stay tuned in. Um, we stay locked in. I think getting that first goal has been huge for us at times, at moments. Uh, if we look back to the Charleston game, Matt might have had a couple of chances where if we put away the complexion of the games to change a little bit. Um, but I think it's just being, being disciplined, being locked in, being focused those 90 minutes.